Hello everyone, welcome to this video about forest ear disease, which is also known as DISH. DISH stands for Diffuse Idiopathic Skeletal Hyperosteosis. From here on, we'll just mention the disease as DISH. DISH is a degenerative disease of the vertebrae, but there are no inflammation. This is a very important difference to differentiate it from ankylosing spondylitis. The main thing to know about DISH is that it occurs abnormal calcification of the soft tissue around the joints in the spine. This calcification leads to fusion of the spine, so it has some similar symptoms as Bechterev's disease. It can also cause calcifications around other bones throughout the body as well. The typical DISH affects the anterior longitudinal ligament, but also quite often the posterior longitudinal ligament. Other possibly affected joints are the sacroiliac and the facet joints. An important thing to know to separate DISH from Bechterev's is that DISH is not associated with HLA B27, while Bechterev's is highly associated. DISH is also commonly DISH is also quite commonly seen in diabetes patients, but there is no connection between diabetes and Bechterev's. Lastly, the median age for diagnosis of the disease is about 50 to 60 years old. And now to symptoms. First, a majority of the patients are actually asymptomatic. If symptoms do occur, they typically start a stiffness and pain localized to the back, which is especially prominent in the mornings. The pain can be highly variable, ranging from just a mild annoyance to physically incapacitating the patient. Diagnosis of DISH is based on a CT or X-ray of the columna. Together with positive symptoms, it is used to diagnose the disease. A common classification system used is the Ostsinger criteria. There are three different points. Point 1 can safely diagnose DISH. Point 2 or 3 means that there is a high possibility of DISH. Number 1 says that there are coherent classifications on the anterior side of the vertebrae, which forms bridges that connect them together. This should occur between most of the vertebrae. Number two says that there are visible calcifications between two continuous vertebrae. And number three, calcifications in the tendon attachments. This has to be present in the same tendon on both sides of the body. The Achilles tendon is the most commonly affected one. Treatment of the disease is based on treating the symptoms. The main way in doing so is that the patient, him or herself, has to be quite physical active and work out a lot. Also, NSAIDs can be quite effective in managing the pain. The prognosis of the disease is quite good, but increased stiffness can lead to decreased physical function for the patient. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to post them below. Cheers.